Assassin's Creed Mirage and Red are on their way. While waiting for them, the fans may be tempted to return to the simpler past. But nostalgia often makes the past rosier in hindsight than it truly is. Assassin's Creed 2 is still seen by many as the absolute peak of the franchise. A lot of the iconic elements of the series begin here in Ezio Saga. However, while no sequel has been as critically blowed as the second installment of the AC series, it's showing signs of age. Players may not like what they find if they revisit the game today. A very warm welcome guys and in this video we are going to raise 10 points about the harsh realities of replaying Assassin's Creed 2. So let's begin. At number 10, the game starts too slowly. While it's not as bad as the first game, Assassin's Creed 2 does have a slow start. The first hour of gameplay is mainly fetch quests and tone settings. While this is important on a first playthrough, it makes replays tougher. This is also excluding cutscenes and the future segments with Miles. Future games in the series would cut the fat and let players get into the historical tourism quicker. In this game, however, the overarching plot needs to get going before players are let loose. At number 9, crowd merging is awkward. Blending in with the crowd was one of the central mechanics of the first Assassin's Creed game. As such, it reappeared in the sequel, however, it was still pretty awkward to use. Future titles would make it easier to use or drop the mechanic entirely. The main reason the crowd blending mechanic is that different crowds move at different speeds. While future games in the Ezio saga would automatically match speeds with the crowd, it was not the case with Assassin's Creed 2. This made it easy for the player to fail to blend in and make its reliability as a stealth option limited. Number 8. The combat of Assassin's Creed 2 is too simple. Future games in the Assassin's Creed series would provide a lot of different methods of combat. There are tons of equipable weapons and skills with different effects and cooldowns. Assassinations can be done in a variety of different ways as well. While one would think more options equals easier combat, it actually means more complexity. In contrast, as you can just stab people and it works most of the time. While missions and combat situations can be open-ended, they are usually quick and efficient. In contrast, combat in later games can be more challenging. Taking out a foe quickly with a concealed blade is simply easier than a elaborate sword fight. Number 7. The minstrels are annoying. Amongst the crowds of people occupying Assassin's Creed 2 are the minstrels. In certain areas of the map, they are more common but they can be found almost anywhere. They approach the player and follow them around while singing a song. This would already be annoying enough on its own. The minstrels are usually terrible singers. Not only that, but it's easy to bump into them while merging into crowds. They also tend to swarm as you with multiple minstrels singing at a time. This can be annoying on replays, but at least you can get a chance to punch the songs out of them. Number 6. Ezio's iconic armor isn't available in the game. There is a phenomenon called iconic sequel element where a part of a sequel becomes a defining aspect of a franchise. This makes revisiting the entire installments awkward because they don't contain that element. This applies to Ezio himself being the most popular assassin in the franchise yet debutting in a sequel. It also applies to Ezio's armor and abilities which don't appear in his first game. Given that Ezio had a whole trilogy of adventures, there are a lot of things from his later adventures that he just doesn't have in the second one. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood changed Ezio to perhaps his most famous appearance. With his armored assassin's garb, several of his abilities from later games like wielding cannons and riding horses are not available here. Number 5. Climbing is too slow in AC2. Parker is a large part of the Assassin's Creed series. While it was accessible in the first game, Assassin's Creed 2 really brought it to a new extent. There were giant 
giant Venetian and Florentine buildings to climb with unbelievable architectural depth. It took so much longer to climb these than the buildings from first or even some of the later titles. Of course, the reason for later is that the climbing was streamlined in the later games. Even in titles with fewer verticals such as Assassin's Creed or Desi, it's very easy to accidentally begin climbing. It can make returning to the game after playing later entries patience testing as they make climbing much easier than this game. And there is also some learning curve involved in this game. At number 4, we can say that the Honorable Thief mission is a nightmare. There are a lot of difficult levels in this title like Town Cryer and Port Authority. These missions do have their upsides though the same cannot be said for Honorable Thief mission which absolutely ruins its neat concept with a frustrating level layout. The level sees Ezio follow a thief to the location of his target. While this initially sounds neat, the thief's pathing is terrible and he is frequently accosted by enemies. If he gets knocked off a roof, the mission is failed. Ezio needs to clear roofs before he gets them which is hard because the game doesn't tell the player where the thief is going. This is one of the most dreaded missions on replays of the game. Number 3. Collecting feathers in AC2 is just tedious. Tougher than any battle is collecting all the collectibles. Later games would continue the tradition of littering the map with collectible items. Still, for most fans, nothing will be more grilling than the feather hunt. The early parts of the game structure spin looking for all the feathers as being emotionally important. That being said, all Ezio gets out of it is a minor aesthetic change. The feathers are a pain to get as well. With there being 100 of them on repeat playthroughs, the feather quest can feel a little arbitrary and pointless. Number 2. Lucy Stillman's story is hard to play through. When Assassin's Creed 2 launched, the story was a big focus. The interplay between the past and present segments was largely improved upon from the first game. This chemistry between protagonist Desmond and Lucy Stillman was great to behold. That makes watching them with the knowledge she turns out to be a more frustrating. Whether this was a plan from the beginning is a suspect, but Christian Bell's iconic character ultimately becomes a villain. This makes this game's present story hard to watch with hindsight. It's perhaps best that the player just skips through them when they have a chance. So at number 1, we can say that the final boss is disappointing. Rodrigo Borgia's historical legacy is that of becoming a byword for the idea of papal corruption. While the real historical man probably wasn't that nasty, he was certainly a famous historian villain worthy of being being the final boss. After all, he's a corrupt politician who ascended to the throne of Pope. You might think fighting him in the middle of a church with such great powers would be exciting. It turns out otherwise for most of the fans. He and Ezio both having pieces of Eden to use in the fight is neat but doesn't translate to much mechanical death. If the player is able to get in close, the fight basically becomes a series of melee attacks until he dies. This leaves any replays of the game with a sense of anti-climax but whether that's a deal breaker is up to the player. That would be it for the day. Hope you like this video and don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Thanks and signing off Game of X.